Now I want to show you an example that's kind of different than the ones that we did the other day. Imagine you have a current carrying wire that's pretty long. And let's say it's carrying a current. And we can make the current um, a variable current. Let's say the current changes as a function of time, t squared plus t. On top of that, there is a coil here. And somebody is uh, dragging this coil. Somebody's dragging that coil. It doesn't have to be rectangular, but in order to make the problem a little bit more doable, I'll make it rectangular. So I'll give it some dimensions. Let's say it is um, 20 centimeters this way, and it's about 15 centimeters this way. And I could say somebody is dragging this uh, with a, let's put it this way. Um, at a constant velocity, let's say. So let's say the velocity is uh, to the right at 2 meters per second. OK? So what that's going to do is this. There's a couple of things going on here. This one creates a B field in that region. OK? And so according to the right-hand rule, the B field is into the board. so on like that. And because the current is changing, the B field it creates is changing. So because the B field is changing, we will create a current in this loop. There will be a current induced in that loop. On top of that, because I'm dragging it, OK, so it's moving across, that means the B field is changing just because it's being dragged. So the B field is changing for two reasons because it's dragged and because uh, the current is changing. So how would we approach something like this? So remember, the, inter the uh, magnetic uh, flux is the integral of B dotted into dA. Now, in all the other previous examples, that we did uh, the other day, the integral B dotted into dA was the same as BA, because the magnetic field was not dependent on the cross-sectional area of the solenoid or the coils. But in this case, the magnetic field created by this over there depends on its distance from this, right? So if I were to take, let's say, a certain piece of this, a certain element of this. And this is my dA now, right? This is my dA. The magnetic field across that dA would be constant because it's equidistant from here, right? So the magnetic field across that vertical rectangular uh, space would be constant. So the what I could do is I could say, what is the magnetic field at that distance from this long wire. Well, if the wire is assumed to be long, we can use uh, Ampere's law, right? The magnetic field of a long wire is mu zero i over 2 pi r. And then my dA is the, uh, the area of that little element, which is going to be what? Well, I can make the thickness equal to dr. And then the length of it is going to be 20 centimeters. So I guess we could change that all to meters, uh, make that 0.2 meters, right? So my dA is 0.2 meters times dr. So my dA is the length of it. Uh, the vertical length of it times its little thickness dr. So 
So this is the first time where we're seeing a case where we're actually integrating the R. Uh, so now we're going to integrate that from uh, this distance to that distance. But this distance is actually changing because I'm not also dragging it. So let's make this distance x, the initial uh, the distance from this to, there, to that. And then I'll make this distance going to be x plus 0.15, right? So I'm going to integrate it from x to x plus 0.15. So the integral of that mu zero i times point, point 0.2 over 2 is what? Uh, that would be 2 tenth, 1 tenth, <clears throat> 2 tenth, uh, 1 tenth, that's one, basically 1 tenth, right? And then the integral of dr over r is ln, natural log of... Um, that right? So mu zero i over 10 pi and then the integral of dr over r became ln and then the upper limit was x plus 0.15. Now can I take any of this part out of the derivative? Okay. Well in this case the current is changing as a function of time so it's not constant. The x is also changing as a function of time so it's not constant. So I can't take any of those out of the integral. Now, if the problem, the one, uh, if the problem had given you a constant current, right, then you could take the current out of the integral, right? If the current was constant, then it would just be the the, uh, the derivative of the ln of x, you know, if it if it was just dragged, or if the problem had told you the current was changing, but this isn't dragged, right? then you could take the ln out of the derivative. But if they're both changing, you have to and then take the derivative of, you have to do the product rule, right? So negative, you can just take the mu zero over 10 pi out. And then the i is uh, t squared plus t, right? So we got to take the derivative of that, which is uh, 2t plus uh, 1. times the ln of okay minus so I'm using the product rule minus mu zero times the current which is t squared plus t over 10 pi and then the derivative of the ln which is 1 over uh, 1 over its uh, itself right so 1 over that becomes x over x plus 0.15. So you just reciprocate the, what's inside the ln times the derivative of the inside, right? So this is just the derivative of the ln times you've got to take the derivative of the, the inside. So what is the inside? Let me simplify this as um, like that because then it's easier to take its derivative, right? So um, you get, uh, now you take the derivative of that, minus 0.15 over x squared. Times dx dt. Oh, that's, a, that's interesting. This negative looks like is uh, canceling with this negative, but that one stays negative. So there seems to be two counter uh, effects going on over here. They're, uh, they're fighting against each other. This one is negative and this one is uh, positive. Right? Now, the other day, what did I say? Negative current is equivalent to what direction current? That was the clockwise, right? So uh, this effect is going to yield a, a clockwise current. And then this is fighting against that. So this is counter 